Okay, so another tree job here. It's tree work by myself. So uh, there's not that much interesting about this job. It's these two fir trees. They're kind of tall. Um, my first thought is why bother filming? Um, it's not that interesting. But you know, I thought that on the last video that I did that idiots with chainsaw one, I almost didn't post it, and then. Uh, no, I mean, I almost didn't film it, and then I really almost didn't post it. But, you know, I just did. I filmed it, and people really liked it. So, it's just two furs. Um, these are coming out. This one's got a big mechanical wound here. This is from, if you see something like this, that's like a sign that something hit that tree. So, he had another tree removed here, uh, I think a couple years ago. Look at this. He just put the rocks around the stump, and this became his new fire pit. Anyways, there's a tree there. The the guys dropped it and they they hit that one. He wants to take this one out. This one is um I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it, you can tell in person. It's a little it's a little sparse. Um, it's in decline. This one's coming out. It's dying. I'm gonna try to do as long as of pieces as possible. I can't drop anything past that tree right there because there's a drain field. But we want to do as long of pieces as possible because this guy's a real he's a real he's a real wood woodsman. He's um. He's got a bunch of stuff going on. He's trying to, he's, he's milling up slabs. He's doing a lot with firewood. He's really making the best of his um, wood. This guy found me on Instagram. He follows me. He lives pretty close to my house, actually. So he just, he's got me out here. No cleanup, just getting those trees down. But yeah, he's really, this guy's really getting after it. Look at all these slabs he's got going on that he's milling up. So that's what he's going to do with the ones I'm cutting down. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll film it and see if you guys like it. You know, a lot of times I just don't film these tree jobs if I don't feel like they're particularly noteworthy. And a lot of times it's like something interesting just happens. So I'm, I'll, I'll film this one and see, see if you guys like it. It's my diesel rig right here. It'd be nice to have a truck again someday, but <laughs> for now it's the tree work in the Jetta. Start with this little one. Yeah, this is what happens when you. Damn, they hit that. That thing hit hard. Dang. All fractured. Crazy. Fractures like this, I don't mind climbing up stuff like this because it's like the wood is all still there. It's just split apart, you know? It's when you see horizontal cracks that you really get scared, you know? Because that means the pieces can break. But this is like. It's obviously not ideal. But <laughs> that's a lot of wood missing. But it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's fine. Fur is really tough. Good old diesel rig. I can get a lot of tree work done with this bad boy. I got this thing loaded up. <laughs> got this is my Limb Reaper. One of the things I've been doing tree work by myself, you know, and uh, one of the problems I'm running into is not having ground guys. I just rigged this up last night because if I run out of gas oil, I got to come out of the tree by myself. Another issue I'm having is like trying to take big pieces. I got nobody to pull on a rope and so, you know, so I, I rigged this up last night too. That way I'm just, I'm really having to adjust my climbing style working by myself. You know, I'm so used to having like ground guys and nice equipment and stuff. So I'm having to so, sort of, like I said, I gotta sort of readjust a little bit. Luckily I can drop pretty big sticks. That'll be nice. Man, I probably really look like a crazy person just pacing back and forth, talking to myself here. I'm gonna take the rope out of this bag. Because I'm gonna be... There's gonna be a bunch of brush down here. I don't wanna bury my rope. My, I mean bury my rope bag, you know? I have to dig it out. Yeah, I really like climbing as light as possible usually, but I just have to deal with this now. I'll have to try to forget that I saw this when I'm at the top. <laughs> 
Oh, hey, look at this. Oh, this tree's perfectly fine. Maybe I'll go up to where, just to make sure it's not tangling that tree a little higher.
gonna brush that a little bit, but I feel I feel good about this top. You know, if I go into a little bit thicker wood, I can get a wedge in there, you know. But if I would've topped it here originally, it, it might've got stuck in that tree, so I skinny it up. And then by just coming down 15 feet, it's all the less to chunk. It's gonna clear through that fur more, and I got room for a wedge. So sometimes a little bigger top is safe. Sometimes it's not. I'm doing pretty shallow knots, so I got room for my wedge. I think I saw it move a little bit. Should be able to get it. Should I yell headache or timber? Dude, I kind of like yelling timber lately. Okay. Oh yeah, here we go. Maybe not. I hear it creaking. I got like a millimeter left in there. Maybe a couple more. Ugh. Sap in my face. Here we go. <laughs> go. Oh, come on. Go. It's popping and cracking. It's gonna go. Caribbean. Timber! All right. Maxed out on my wedge there. I'm up against the hinge. There's not much left. It's leaning the right way. I'm just gonna do a couple swipes on the face cut. Actually, I'll try, I'll try pushing it first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go over pretty easy when you cut deep like that. All right, one tree down. Well, actually, it's not down. One tree topped. days I'm gonna get this. All right, tree number two. All right, here we go. Velcro straps, I can tie them super easy in the tree. Like these boots are worn, 
I got like no heel left on these things, but the straps are for sure.
it's backwards. I'm gonna go take a small one out. Oh man, it's starting to rain. It's starting to drizzle. I used to have people to ask to tie on my jacket. Now I just get wet. <laughs> pushing one hand on the top one hand on the side this can be dangerous right if it kicks back there goes my guts you know but what else can be dangerous is having the top go backwards you know so it's like I'm very mindful of my saw and I feel I feel okay it, it, it also if I do it right here right it hits my chest that's better than hitting my guts you know because I got I got bones in here you know but then I don't have any pushing leverage. So come up here, we're in the gut zone, but I'm gonna be super careful. And I've got good leverage here, you know. The top going back is dangerous too, you know. This is my job, man. I just, oh my gosh. Dude, it's so fun. Like people ask me if I have any hobbies or something. It's like, dude, I, I like doing tree work. It never, dude, it never gets old. So the guy's down there with his kids. I'm not gonna like zoom in on his kids, you know, but the customer had me out here. I was just, so the, the customer had me out here and he was like, I had my kids stay home today because I figured that they'd learn more if they stayed home than if they went to school. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I was climbing this tree. It, it really I, like kind of resonated with me. It, I really just was thinking about it up here. Like, man, like what a good dad, you know? He wasn't like talking about his kids like GPA or whether they'd be absent or tardy or what the parents or the teachers would say, you know? He's just like, yeah, I figured they'd learn more if they stayed home than if they went to school, you know? And I was just like, yeah, like I said, I was just climbing the tree, like thinking about what he said, like what, what an awesome perspective, you know? Like, I guess that's, I don't know. I just kind of, kind of hit me inside. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's about learning more than just, you know, the, the classroom stuff. I don't know. And it, it made me feel kind of, it made me feel really respected too. Cause you know, I've sometimes you, you do tree work and you, the customers look at you like you're just a, dirty tree guy you know like I mean which I, I am a dirty tree guy but it's like I don't know I just I felt kind of like respected that he thought you know my kids staying home they'll just watch a working man do a blue collar job and you know they'll learn something so shout out you know shout out to the customer what a cool guy it's it's just awesome he has me out here I have the time of my life and he makes me feel all, all warm inside you know like yeah, I just, that's like, that's the kind of dad I want to be for my kids, you know, like really looking at it from that perspective, like just trying to help them learn, you know, not just, I don't know. He just said it so casually. I figured they learned more if they stayed home than if they went to school. Let's take a log out of this thing. Dang, dude, this, uh, I'm going to probably have to go down and grab my 40s. Okay. I'm going to cut this. <laughs> I miss my 20 inch panther bar. I can get a square edge on this chain so it, it cuts better, but 
I might switch back to that 20 inch bar because I keep finding myself short lately. The 14 is nice for getting limbs and stuff, but getting into the wood, that 20 inch is super nice. And it's, it weighs exactly the same, but it gets kind of tiring on the wrist when you got a 20 inch bar and you're trying to knock limbs out. I don't know. It's a tough call, right? I can get a longer bar with the quarter pitch. I can get a sharper chain with this one, which I need to... You can tell it's actually getting dull. See how it's getting burned on the top? That's the pitch burning. I probably need to sharpen this thing, but it's still cutting pretty good. Okay. So, in theory, it's like I could technically cut through this big wood with my 200, but you know, it's just safer if I'm all the way through. I'm gonna be really, really short. I'm gonna be double cutting on the back cut and the face cut if I try to use this bar. Harder to line the cuts up. It'll take me another 10 minutes to go get my saw, and I gotta climb this stick with the big saw which is lame, but you know, it's worth it to take the extra few minutes just to do it. It's a, just do it a little more safely, you know? Sometimes it's like, you know, cutting the branches one-handed. It's like, yeah, it's, maybe it's a little, it's not quite as safe, but it's, tree work is a constant struggle, right? It's a constant give and take, the yin and yang to like trying to be efficient and productive but also be safe, you know? Like I could use three climbing lines and it'd be really safe, but I wouldn't be able to get nothing done, you know, because I can't move around. So it's like, it's a constant struggle. So sometimes I might push, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Dang it. <sighs> Dang it. Anyways, like I was saying, sometimes it's like, yeah, I'll push it with the one handing, you know. I feel safer doing it, even though it's not textbook. But then I'll have to go way out of my way to grab a saw that I think will make the cut safer, you know. Cause that can be really dangerous, you know, trying to and fatiguing if you don't get your cuts lined up and everything. I'm not here to tell anybody how to do it, or just sort of like sharing how I do it, you know. I gotta get those hangers out. Just started like really raining. It's kind of too hot for a raincoat though. It's really muggy out. Just gonna deal with the rain. I'm gonna be cooking by the time I get to the top of that stick. It's always so hard to decide what you want to wear before you go up the tree. <laughs> You're really committed to that outfit. Sometimes you try to take like your sweatshirt off and you just like, oh, you get so all sawdust in your underpants and stuff. First world problems, you know. You know what, I'm going to leave this down here actually. I'm going to pull it up to myself. I think it'll be easier to pull it up with my arms than to hike up there with it. I'm just going to put this back on at the top. This thing slows me down trying to hike up. This thing doesn't like come after me as well as some of the other devices. Even if I clip it to my chest. So I'm just gonna take this off for a minute. Alright. 
It's a long way to the top. Dude, I do not know how those those pole climber the guys that race at the logger shows. I do not know how they do that. When I go at this pace, I'm beat when I get to the top. Never been doing this way. <laughs> my brain always pictures like my flip line just going over the top. That would suck. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I really, uh, working by myself really gives me a new level of appreciation for ground guys. <laughs> Take back everything me and I ever said about ground gas. And I'm picking up a limb with it. That sucks. <laughs> Maybe I should have just hiked up here with this. Stinking limb. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Dude. How? Okay, sometimes water droplets get on the lens and I'm filming in the rain and it just like ruins the shot, so I'm sorry if that's happening. Now that I'm up here, I'm really glad I went down and got my 46 instead of just trying to trying to wing it with that 14 inch bar. Sometimes being lazy when you're climbing, that's really like the most dangerous thing, man. You can really put yourself in bad predicaments if you're just being lazy, you know? Like you don't want to climb to the top or you don't, you know, want to take the time to do it a certain way. It's probably good right here. where square grinding is so nice like cleaning up your dutchman's your face cuts when you're digging in sideways to the tree it bites so much better with a square edge than with a round edge you're not like sliding around on the slope together Jake <laughs> oh my 
god. How? These weren't even on the same carabiner. It's like these are. Like, definitely have to revise this setup. Oh my goodness. I just want the hatchet off. Oh! Where goes that wedge? Alright, so I'm pretty much maxed out with this wet. <laughs> this fur is so strong. Try to get up a little higher, give it a little push. <sighs> Definitely have to improve <laughs> the wedge and gas system here. Usually I just say, hey, send me up an accent wedge. Or send me up a rope, that's even better. Probably one more chunk, and then I can follow this pig. Wood looks nice. Yeah. At least up, up top. Yeah. Uh, it's probably pretty nice down low too. Lovely weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Ooh, did break this one. That's it, job complete. Let me know if you like that video. Like I said, I usually, uh, a lot of times I do jobs like this and I'm just like, nobody's gonna wanna watch me do this, <laughs> you know? I'm always like, I need something exciting. It's gotta be like a really big tree. I gotta have some interesting people I'm working with, you know? Um, I don't know, did you like that? Is that, did you like watching me cut down those two trees? Um, I, I can film more if you guys enjoyed that. But like I said, I'm always, Frankly, I'm kind of shocked that anybody watches my videos, um, just in general. So, <laughs> I'm surprised, but people do watch them. So, let me know if you like that, if you want me to keep making videos, even when it's not the most exciting tree job. It seems like there's always something interesting that does happen, usually. Anyways, I just appreciate you guys' time. I appreciate, um, especially that last video I did, you know, the 80s with chainsaw one. I was really shocked, actually, like, I really almost didn't upload that one, and, uh, almost didn't film it and I was just surprised like how many people had nice things to say about the video they liked it they watched it and I was like huh maybe I I, I don't know maybe uh maybe the videos don't have to be so flashy and fancy and you know I, I don't know what I'm trying to say I'm just trying to say thanks for watching this video hope you like that please subscribe to this channel it would mean a lot to me um really trying to build my sub subscribers back up so I'd appreciate it I appreciate your time have a good one. Bye.